Hi, and welcome to a discussion of internet models. So first of all, what is a model? I've defined it here to mean a set of statements or beliefs about a phenomenon which are brought together to help us make predictions about that phenomenon. Let's imagine an example. Suppose we think of a football. You know that if you kick a football, it will move in the direction that you kick it in. Let's call that rule one. You also know that the harder you kick that ball, the further it will travel. Let's call that rule two. If we combine these two rules, we can say that the harder we kick a football in a certain direction, the further it will travel in that direction. Thus, we've made a useful prediction. Our brains build models all the time, but we usually don't think about them, and we certainly don't write down the rules. So what's an internet model? Well, this is a term that I've come up with to describe a model that is developed through collaboration on the internet without those collaborators needing to be experts in the field. This has a number of implications. Firstly, the theory or data needs to be explained in a way that makes it readily accessible. One of the ways I hope to achieve this is through the use of explicitly stated assumptions. Secondly, this approach facilitates a collective ownership of science. So what about the internet medium? The internet offers a number of different and evolving means for communicating, including, but not limited to, web pages or blogs, audio recordings, podcasts or conferences, forums, email and software solutions. Thus the internet allows us to communicate in new ways. Here is an example. If you imagine a normal conversation, two people talking to each other in the same room, they take it in turns to speak and then listen to each other. On the internet, with the use of video recordings, there is a variation on this which I will re refer to as distributed conversations. So, I've recorded this presentation, but someone may produce their own video response, and someone in turn may respond to their presentation. If each presentation is considered as a node, then at each node there can be several responses, as shown in the diagram. Thus, the first video can set up a tree-like structure of responses, which is vastly different from the conversation we first considered, as we can review all of the branches of those online conversations. This non-linear dialogue occurs offline as well, it's just the process is much easier to trace online. For instance, video, text or audio trails are left behind and can be easily identified. So, what are the possible outcomes about an open collaborative system for developing science? Well, first of all, this approach might not take off. People might just decide to leave science to the scientists. I'm more optimistic, though. Innovative approaches could support open collaboration, approaches that engage people. If people can have ownership of science, then this could foster an increasing interest in science. An open collaborative approach could advance science much more quickly, particularly with the use of appropriate software. If you have any questions or ideas or want to discuss it further, drop me an email at justinmarley17 at yahoo.co.uk. Follow the development of an internet model of the insular cortex on YouTube or at http colon forward slash forward slash the amazing world of psychiatry dot wordpress dot com forward slash. Thank you very much for your time.